Now, it seems a weekly occurrence that we are seeing natural disasters here at home and right around the world. How those stories are told, though, are through first-hand accounts from those affected and from those who are first on the scene. It's often through the confronting vision that we see that we come to understand the breadth of disasters. And that saying really is true, that a picture can say a thousand words. And that's exactly what Josh Edelson hopes to do with his compelling and often confronting photos. Josh is a fr freelance photojournalist who's reported from a number of disasters, including the recent floods in California. He spoke to me earlier from San Francisco. California, as you may know, is no stranger to uh, natural disasters. We have wildfires that happen every year and floods a little bit less frequently. But this uh, spat of storms and flooding was kind of unprecedented. So what was my reaction? It was it was intense. Um, I haven't seen any floods like this in California, especially as as widespread as it was. It was it was a lot. Tell me about that intensity. What was it like on the grounds? Sure. So in uh, in the town of Merced, California, uh, it was very surprising. Uh, the river not only overflowed, but there were multiple levee breaches and um, an entire section of the town was completely flooded. And when I say flooded, I don't mean standing water. I mean, there was a pretty strong current as the river was just flowing right through the town. So it was it was a lot. People were some people were trying to drive through the water, some unsuccessfully. Um, houses were completely buried in water and it was just really unexpected and wild. And, and in amongst that extraordinary damage, there were also uh, incredible stories of heroicism. Tell me about Fidel Osario. Sure. So that, uh, that particular resident, there was, um, I was walking along wearing waders, which go up to my chest. Uh, so I'm walking along in the floodwaters with my camera and a resident is walking in the water also in his clothes to get to his home where there was essentially rapids going down his driveway to his house. And I asked him if I could go with him. So I followed him and he guided me along where his driveway was because you don't know what's underneath the water, like one false step and I could fall into a drainage that's really like 10 feet deep. So you have no idea what's under your feet. So it's tricky. Um, but once I got into the backyard with him, I saw that he had three dogs that were stranded uh, and there was rising water and they were just kind of standing on a platform on a balcony at the back of his home, just sort of barking and yelping. And he was there to try to save his dogs from um, the rising floodwaters. So that was the scene I came across. Um, eventually, he went and solicited the help of firefighters who came in and helped him rescue the dogs. And that's the photo that you captured uh, that we've got here. Uh, tell me about uh, what that was like in that moment as you'd been following along. Yeah, I mean, I was really worried for the dogs. I mean, there was one point when as soon as he got there, they were so excited to see him that they started to jump into the water and he had to grab them and put them back onto the platform. Um, because they just wanted to be with their owner and they didn't know where to go. And so eventually there was uh, another resident stayed with the dogs and kept them from jumping in. And he went and got the firefighters uh, to, to come and do the rescue. But I mean, it was kind of crazy out there. Like there was a point where I was nervous myself on whether or not I was going to be able to stand without being pushed over. Because I'd say the current was probably going at, I don't know, maybe five to seven miles an hour. But you know, even at uh, six inches of water, I mean, it could push you right off your feet because it's pretty strong. So yeah, it was wild and, and I'm really glad they were able to save the dogs because they, they were just really, really happy uh, to be rescued because they were completely stuck there. And, and I felt so bad for that particular resident and who knows how many others were affected by this as well. How do you grapple with that, with your own safety in amongst covering disasters such as this one? Sure. Um, so I'm no stranger to covering disasters. It's it's kind of my uh, my niche in terms of what I like to cover uh, wildfires and earthquakes and, and crazy storms and stuff like this. So 
There is definitely a systematic approach to staying safe with these types of things. Like for example, each step that I take, I have to be careful on what's ahead of me before taking a step. So I move very slowly. For example, when I go into a backyard, I don't know if there's gonna be a pool in the backyard. And if I don't know what's underneath, I could fall right into a pool. And then not only do I lose my cameras and my photos, but you know, with my waders, I could, could be a dangerous situation. So. Um, while I was walking with this particular resident, I walked right behind him. So, cause he knows his yard. So I tried to carefully go where he went and not to deviate outside of his path, you know, cause I don't want to get stuck. So that's, that's one of the things, one of the many things that you can do to try to navigate, uh, those types of floodwaters. And you, you mentioned there that it, it, this has become your niche covering bushfires, droughts, volcanoes erupting, tornadoes. Why? Why is that your niche? Um, OK, so I find it interesting. Visually, it's interesting. But also, I think nature is amazing and powerful. And sometimes it takes an event like that to remind us all that um, we're kind of at its mercy. And I think that it's it's beautiful and disastrous and intimidating and I, I guess that's why I'm drawn to it. What have you learned about the world, about disasters, about how we react and respond to them through your work as, as a photojournalist? I'd say that people tend to not uh, be worried about things like that until it affects them directly. So it's one thing to say, oh, yeah, there's floods on the other side of the world or in another state or in another city. But once it's on your doorstep, then people actually start taking interest. So I feel like by bringing photos up into the forefront of people's attention uh, by them going in, into the news and on social media and whatnot and posting some on my website, I think it, it kind of shows people that this is a reality for millions of people, like all types of things like this. And um, I hope ultimately, I hope it can affect some sort of positive change. I, I guess that's that would be my best hope. I guess there's something there about collective empathy, isn't there? Yeah, absolutely. I know that the uh, President Biden just came uh, yesterday to visit some of the flood damage in California. And I can't help but wonder if it wasn't for all of the, the great coverage of the floods from uh, all the photographers in the area, if if that wouldn't have even been noticed. Um, so maybe it results in uh, um, disaster funding going to the states or cities or or directly to the people that are affected by these things. Um, maybe it's just general climate change awareness. But whatever it is, I hope that, you know, this type of coverage can um, can can bring more attention to the types of things that are happening here and abroad. Well, we're certainly grateful for, for your coverage and for joining us this morning. Josh Edelson, thanks for joining us on Weekend Breakfast. Sure, absolutely. Thanks.